Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. I'm actually really happy right now because I didn't think I was going to be able to publish a video this weekend. I had a lot of school stuff going on, a lot of volunteer work, um, and it just didn't look like a video was going to happen. But some of that actually just got cancelled and I have four hours free right now. Uh, a lot of people have emailed me asking me to make another garage sale find video. It's been a month, uh, about a month since the last one, and that's exactly what I am going to do today. So today we're going to be taking a look at this HP G60 that I picked up at the garage sale for $2.50. So I haven't actually tried to power this thing on yet, but my best guess is that this is non-functional. One, because I picked it up for $2.50. Dirt cheap. Two, um, because this is a fairly new laptop. I believe these were manufactured around uh, late 2008, early 2009. As you can see, I mean, it's actually in pretty good condition. For some reason, someone has uh, ripped some of these keycaps off uh, up here. That's really a shame. Uh, but for the most part, you know, cosmetically uh, and structurally, the laptop is sound. Um, as you can see, it is missing the bottom panel, and I will give you guys a closer look at that in just a minute. Um, but I really want to see if this thing will actually power on first. I'm going to change things up a little bit. So I'm going to grab the power supply. We're going to plug this thing in and see if it actually powers up. And I also want to get rid of this Coastal Edge sticker. As you guys can see, I removed that sticker and the nice shiny HP logo is now uncovered. Um, if you guys can tell, I'm trying to be a little bit more relaxed about these garage sale find videos. One, because I'm super tired right now. And two, because people have been like, calm down, you know, you're talking too fast and you're talking really loud and it's driving me nuts. So um, I think for the garage sale find videos from now on, I'm going to try to uh, tone things down a little bit. And I need to hands open this up. There we go. Hey guys, look at that glare. Um, but as you can see, the laptop is now plugged in. The charging uh, LED indication light is on. And I'm going to go ahead and try to power this thing on. Let's get the screen in focus. Come on camera, focus. There we go. I'm going to hit the power button and let's see what happens. Okay, so the fan is spinning up. Oh, wow. Oh wow, it looks like it is actually functional. Let me try to get into the BIOS again. I missed it that time. Oh man, that system fan does not sound good at all. But as you can see, I have our system information open right now and we can check out some system specifications. There's really not too much here. We have two gigabytes of DDR2 RAM installed inside the system. We have an Intel Celeron processor running at 2.2 gigahertz. I believe this particular model is a dual core processor. And then all the way to the bottom, you can see that this system would have originally shipped with Windows 7. Um, now, it appears like everything is fine and dandy right now. And by the way, the display looks really good as well as a 1366 by 768 uh, resolution display. And I'm not really sure, you know, there has to be something wrong with this, right? Uh, why else would someone part this thing out and just toss it to the side like they did? Because in my opinion, you know, the hardware within the system would make a, you know, pretty decent daily driver. I, I, I don't really know. I'm expecting to run into some sort of issues, but hey, we might not. I tried to flip the camera around there, but I just ended up getting all tangled up, so I had to cut the clip there. I'm going to go ahead and take you guys quickly around the system. We'll take a look at the system peripherals, uh, take a quick look inside at some of the hardware. Then I'm actually going to grab the solid state drive, install, um, I'll probably go with Ubuntu 16.04 on this thing, and we'll check out general system usability and performance. Uh, yeah, I could install Windows. I do install Windows in some of these videos. You know, I'm not completely biased to Linux, um, but for this particular PC, I think Linux is fitting for it, so I'm going to install Ubuntu on it. I'm going to start from the right side and work my way around. Right here, you can see a DVD drive. We have two USB 2.0 ports right here, phone modem, and a lock slot. So I'll just flip the laptop around. We'll take a look at the back. As you can see, there's really nothing on the back. The plastic is in good condition. Uh, there's no visible cracks or anything near the hinges, and actually the hinges uh, still feel pretty good, uh, still tight, and hold the screen bezel up properly. And we will move over to the left side of the laptop. You can see our power jack. Uh, VGA out. Is that in focus? It is in focus. Uh, we have an Ethernet port, HDMI port, and one more USB 2.0 port, and then a card reader all the way to the right. 
And then I'll just flip this thing over so you can take a look at the back. And unfortunately, oh, the Windows 7 code is uh, blocked by a bunch of Best Buy stickers. I wonder if I can get that off. I'll pop the battery out. I already took a look at this, and it appears that the battery is dead. Um, so that might be the reason that they tossed this to the side. Um, but this is a 47 watt hour battery at 10.8 volts. So that places this around 4.5 amp hours. Hardware wise, you can see our Wi Fi module right here two sticks of DDR2 RAM, each one gigabyte in capacity, and then the space for our hard drive. Yes, they did give this to me without a hard drive. I believe these systems originally shipped with a 320 gigabyte 5400 RPM uh, Western Digital Drive. I might be wrong about that. And if I am, go ahead and correct me in the comment section. And yes, they did give me this PC without the back panel. The out of the box and Linux experience with this PC has been awesome. Everything has just worked, even Wi-Fi. I'm connected to my home network right now through the integrated wireless card and I didn't have to do any fiddling or anything like that. It just recognized the card and asked me if I wanted to connect to the network. Um, I did make a mistake earlier, I believe. I think I said this was a dual core Celeron processor and it is in fact not. Um, this is the Intel Celeron 900 processor, uh, which only has one core. And if you want some more CPU information, it is all all right there. I'm about to toss a lot of information uh, at you guys. So I have a couple of terminals open. So that's the information for our CPU. Here's some information for our RAM. If anyone is interested, they can go ahead and pause it here. And let me make sure uh, that is properly focused. And yes, it is. And then I got one more. Uh, I have uh, a terminal open with the PCI devices listed. And you can see uh, the model of our integrated graphics. We have uh, Intel Mobile 4 series graphics um, and all the other information below. I will scroll down so you can take a look at all that and lots of information here um, as you can see I'm not gonna you know read all this off because that would just take forever but I'll scroll through it just so if you're curious you can go ahead and pause it and take a look yourself and we're almost there almost at the bottom I know you guys are getting bored all right we're done with that Overall, the system is very responsive, it's pleasant to use, it boots up in under 30 seconds and shuts down in under 5. Uh, granted, we do have that Adata SP550 solid state drive in this thing, it's a 120GB solid state drive, performance is uh, definitely pretty good, I have a review on it, if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description, and if you want to check the solid state drive itself out, the link for that will be in the description. Uh, let's just run through a daily use performance test right now, we're going to open up some applications, uh, check out general responsiveness on camera, so I'm just going to go for some Office applications right now. I'll pop open LibreOffice Writer, um, and that didn't take very long at all. I type in the good old generic phrase, hello, YouTube, and we'll just play around with the font, maximize it, italicize it, underline it, and we'll change it to something weird. Actually, that's not really weird, um, but that's working all fine and dandy. And of course, I will multi or demonstrate the system's multitasking capability as well. Open up LibreOffice Calc, open up LibreOffice Impress, and these things are opening up like that. Um, very, very responsive system right now. Open up an instance of the file manager. Um, what else can we open up? Can we open up a terminal? And let's go ahead and pop open Firefox web browser and browse around the web. The first thing I'm gonna hit is, of course, my website. And now uh, things have started to slow down a little bit. Um, Firefox is taking a little bit longer to open up. There we go. I'll go ahead and pop that open. And you can see what I was looking at beforehand. And as I said earlier, we are going to hit my site first, www.acomputersandtechnology.com. Uh, this might take a little bit long to load up just because I have quite a bit on my homepage. But as you can see, it's chugging along just fine. And the web page is nearly fully loaded. It's not quite there yet. Yeah, so it is a little bit sluggish with uh, my homepage in particular, just because I do have quite a bit on it. There's a lot of images and a lot of videos towards the bottom, and it kind of just opened my eyes that I should uh, probably try to optimize this a bit better. Wow. Okay, there we go. So it's finally loaded up. Scrolling's uh, gone much smoother, and I can now uh, easily navigate the site. So I'm going to open up another tab. We're going to navigate to YouTube. So www.youtube.com and I'm going to go ahead and just go right to one of my videos so we can check out video playback on this machine. I'm going to bump it up to 1080p at 60fps but keep in mind um, that the screen resolution on this thing maxes out at 1366 by 768 so it's already set to that. We're going to maximize this. Actually I should probably go ahead and turn the volume up. Give me a sec to fiddle with these settings. Okay, there we go. Now I got it running at 1080p at 60fps with the sound turned up, so now you can hear the uh, integrated speakers within the laptop, and they actually sound okay. 
and let's just bump it down for kicks all the way down to 480p to see what that looks like. And there we go, that's 480p playback at 30 FPS on this computer using Firefox. Guess what just happened? My uh, microphone tried to kill me. It nearly impaled me there. It fell off the stand and uh, came flying towards my face. So we're going to visit a couple more sites and probably call it for this video. I do have to talk about something regarding this laptop at the end of this video, so stay tuned. I think I might know what I'm going to do with this. It, it depends. I don't think I want to sell this um, because I think I could put to good use and I keep saying I think. Sorry. Uh, we're going to navigate to the Associated Press's website right now. We want to go to US News and let's see what's in the headlines and how long it actually takes to load up. As you can see, uh, this website's a little bit lighter and therefore it loads up a lot faster. I'm just going to go to my archive site now. There we go, there's the archive site, uh, which is a lot lighter on resources than the primary site. And speaking of resources, let's check out what our system resources look like right now. Uh, so CPU sitting at full load at the moment, we're pretty much maxing out our memory um, because we have a ton of applications open. Remember, I opened all those applications at the start of this little test and I left them open um, just to see how this system would run with a whole bunch of stuff open and it's handled it very, very, very well up to this point. Uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and visit CNN because their site's just awful. Uh, there's so much stuff over their site. It's, uh, lots of scripts, lots of ads, and they're just, you know, even with my most powerful systems, it tends to slow them down. So www.cnn.com. <laughs> All right, well, it's almost there, and I think we're gonna call it because I don't feel like waiting anymore, but yeah, that always takes a very long uh, time, and on their old site configuration, uh, the website would just crash on my older machine, so they have improved it a little bit. Let's go ahead and close out of all this. I am going to bring this computer around, and then I'll talk to you guys for a minute before I end this video. Okay, so I'm gonna have a little story time now, and if you don't care, go ahead and close out of the video because it's pretty much over at this point, but don't forget to drop a like on your way out. Anyway, I started volunteering at my local high school marching band two weeks ago, I believe, uh, because my sister is in it, and I just wanted to give, a, give back to it because it's given so much to me. Um, and I met this kid there. He's a year younger than I am. He's about to go into college next semester, um, and he said he likes programming. He wants to become a computer programmer, uh, major in computer science, and I talk, I started talking to him. I'm like, you know, what, what languages do you program? Uh, what do you like about computer programming? And at one point in that conversation, he said that he didn't own a computer, uh, which really surprised me because, you know, computer science major, I'm a computer engineering major, and I have like 50 computers around here. Um, so I would like to kind of hook this kid up with something because I, I'm going to see him a lot, and I think it would just be nice to, to help him out. And my dogs just interrupted story time. But anyway, I have so much stuff up here, and in the back, I don't even know what I have in the back. I have to go through there and check, um, and I might have something better than this. Uh, I want to get him a laptop because, uh, did, you know, he's going to be going to college and that would be the most practical choice. I'm not sure if it's going to be this laptop, though, uh, because it is missing the bottom panel, which, you know, is essential. You don't want stuff going in there and destroying all the components inside. Uh, I could care less about the missing keys. I mean, that's not really a big deal. Uh, and then I do need to open this up at one point and see if I can fix the left button on the trackpad because that is currently not responsive. Bonding. Uh, I might have something better in the back. Once again, that's something I'm going to have to go uh, and see because a lot of stuff back there. I don't even know what I have back there. There there might be a whole video just out of that, just trying to archive all the... I was going to say crap, but I just stuff I, I have in the back. Um, so that's something I'm considering. If anyone knows where I could get a back panel for this laptop and maybe replacement keys, can you go ahead and uh, give me a link in the description to help me out? Um, so I'll keep you guys updated on that. I might make a video about that. We might have a little upgrade video. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links, both of which will be in the description. You can also support me by checking out my Patreon. That link will be in the description as well. And of course, please don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.